everyone, this is Stephen Weintraub with Collider, and I am here at our studio at TIFF, uh, which is at the Cinema Center at Marble, and I want to give them a huge thank you for having us. They've been great, uh, and I'm here with the cast and filmmaker behind uh, Sing Sing, uh, which is a fantastic film that is world premiering here at TIFF. I hate starting with the generic thing, but no one watching this interview will have seen the movie yet. So who wants to bite the bullet and explain what the film is about? The film uh, tells the story. It's based on a true story about a theater program inside of a maximum security prison at Sing Sing. Uh, it is based on really a friendship between two men who are in this program in the prison. And uh, they're very different people, very different personalities, need very different things from each other in the program. One is uh, Divine G, played by Coleman Domingo. And the other is uh, Divine I, played by Divine I. You've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple times. Uh, one of the things I want to start with, which I found so fascinating, um, is the the way everyone was paid on this film, which is not actually about the movie itself, but the fact that it's 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 so different and so interesting and cool, and it makes everyone very invested in making the film. Yeah, thank you. That's it's something that uh, Greg Quidar and I. Um, we really started in our last film, Jockey, of trying to figure out how there, there's a lot of inequality and lack of transparency, even in indie film. We're, we're dealing with it across the board right now with, with the strikes, of course. Um, and, uh, and so we pioneered this um, approach where everybody gets paid the same thing. Everybody on crew gets paid the same day rate or week rate uh, based on uh, the SAG rates. That's from our lead, Coleman, all the way down to the PAs. And uh, the only difference is the time you work. And then we also split the equity with everybody on um, on a very like clear and transparent level where it's standardized. So the amount of time you work determines how much equity you get. I really want to say that's amazing. And um, really, like, that's Thank amazing. You. And yeah, it makes such a difference in, in treating people. Uh, treating people as owners and as partners in the project rather than just as people who are working on it. And then you say, thank you, goodbye. Um, they really get to ride it all the way through with you in a way that that's um, it makes the work better. It makes them feel better. It makes you feel better. And, and everyone gets to if the film wins, everybody wins. Sure. Coleman, if you, if you don't mind me asking, you've been on a lot of sets. Did you notice a different kind of energy making this because of this radical profit participation model that is so different than the other projects you've worked on? I think so, but it also um, points to the way that uh, Greg and Clint and Monique invited everyone in as collaborators in every single way. So that means that every single person truly had a voice in how we were doing this, even the way we were shaping scenes, you know, even the way they were built with uh, Clarence and I. You know, I feel like we all had stakes in it because it was you were an equal partner in every single way. You never just felt like you were just used for your work and sort of discarded. You feel like I'm seeing this all the way through. Sure. Um, I thought this was like, I really want to commend you guys. I thought this was so well done. And one of the reasons is because of the on location filming and everything just felt very authentic. And that like the camera was sort of just a silent observer. So can you sort of talk about um, filming in a real prison and uh, what, you know, the behind the scenes of the making of the movie? Well, listen, we're in a, an actual prison and uh, there's no, the, the windows, you can't open the windows and you look outside and there's a courtyard with all this barbed wire on it. It just gives you a real authentic feeling of what it must be like in there. And there's no ventilation. They had gigantic fans running to keep us uh, a little bit cooled off. And then when we had to shoot, the fans go off and we're, we're schwitzing to the whole, <laughs> it was it was fantastic. A, a great, I mean, not a comfortable environment to, uh, to shoot a film in, but it did bring some authenticity to it. I, that, I really appreciated the whole experience. Yeah, for me, uh, it was a little apprehension going back into prison. I'd already <laughs> served 20 years in prison, so I was a little apprehensive about going back. But going back in, this time I had a purpose. The purpose was to get this message of who we are out to the world and, and what we can do and how we can contribute to society. We needed to get that message out. Yeah, I think they, the whole experience, I think um, levels you in a way um, and has, you have even more intentional purpose in what you're trying to tell, which is share these, this program and how 
beneficial this program is to human beings inside the prison system, how art saves lives, it transforms, it gives words to your experience and to let you know you're not alone in the world. And that's what I know that my brother over here has taken away from the, with this experience and how it's propelled him into a different place in, in his life. I know you, you get offered scripts, you've worked on so many different projects. What was it about this project that said, I absolutely have to do this? I was first sent the Esquire magazine article that was based on, you know, a story on, on these men in, at Sing Sing on this program. And I thought, wow, this is incredible because it really, I understood that these these men loved what I loved, which is theater and Shakespeare and how it has transformative powers. And so I thought that, that was fascinating. And then they invited me in to let me know how we we're going to create this, um, not only in a very, like you said, the very equitable way, but also in a way that really invites everyone to bring their best and bring all their ideas and shape this based on what we were all interested in. So we all have ownership of it. I think every single thing that we did with every single day was work that we truly all believed in. And we wrestled with it, even on the day. Mm -hmm. Every day we wrestled with, was that scene right? Is it the best expression of this world? Is it honest? Is it is it part of the experience? And, the, the, and is it theatralized in a way that helps you know bring it to film and cinema? So we we all feel ownership of it. So I knew that that was something I wanted to be a part of. I mean, as you know, I, you know I've, I've been working for a long time. And I think the things that I really care about deeply that I want to be a part of, even as a producer, as a producer on this as well, are things that I feel like change the world in some way. I think that's why I have access to, if I have access and I have more eyes on me, I want to say, hey, I want to draw your eye to this because I think his story matters. I think the, this experience matters and this is what we need more of. One of the things um, is the success of the RTA program in the prison. And if and I, I was looking at the numbers, so many prisoners are reincarcerated, but the the success rate of the RTA program is phenomenal. So can you sort of talk, I mean, I'm sort of talking about it already, but right. can you sort of talk about the, the success of the program and what needs to happen to actually bring this program to more prisons? Because it seems like it's, it's, it's very successful. The success of RTA comes from the men in RTA, the people, the participants, the volunteers, individuals being woken up by other men, by other people who care. In prison, you have individuals who have been written off by society. Basically, once you get a sentence, 20 years or whatever, society figure you're dead already. You no longer can contribute to society. However, RTA recognized that these men still have something to contribute. And by having volunteers that come in and, 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 and actually invest their time and go through all the things that our visitors have to go through. You know, the volunteers have to get searched, pat frisked, everything just to come and help us. So when they do that, we look at them differently. They look at us differently and we meet in the middle. They took two steps toward us. So it's our obligation to take two steps toward them and live this thing out. And actually, men have to choose themselves to be men. If you're waiting for corrections to correct your behavior, it will never happen because they don't want to correct your behavior. They want you to come back to prison. This is how they keep their, their job, you know, that keeps them unemployed. So correcting our behavior is not on the agenda. So if you don't come in and have the presence of mind to correct your own behavior, if you don't have that in you, then they will let you die and fall to the wayside as far as because as far as society is concerned. But we figure we have something else to contribute. And what we look out and see where we can fit in is addressing the issues of the youth. That's what I do now. I, I, I reach out to the youth. I work with at-risk teens to try to prevent them from going down a path that I took. So, and I noticed that while working with these teens, there's a lot of things that, you know, all of us can do to contribute to our children because a lot of the children have lost faith in us. They don't, they don't, they, they lost faith in us because we are afraid of them. We are afraid to correct their behavior. They really want correction. Mm. How much but do they, I love this guy? <laughs> you're, you're, he's just awesome. Yeah, they really I, do he's want awesome. correction. I love him. And that's, that's, that's what this program brought to me to bring to the world. Well, talk a little bit about one of the things that's, um, uh, I believe all the performers outside of certain people were all previous members of the program who right. are on camera. So can you sort of talk about working 
um, because it just felt so authentic as I was watching it. You know, can you guys sort of talk about that aspect and what it was like for the two of you? I think it's kind of cool the fact that, you know, these men who went through this program, they had an opportunity to come back and sort of play a version of themselves. And I think that to also shape a narrative in a film. So it shows that they're, they're working craftsmanship as actors as well. So I feel like I, I want, I don't want that to be discounted that it was very real and very meta and in close to the bone, yet it took such a tremendous skill to also be a part, to go in and like find a dramatic narrative, right? right? And, and, and do scene work to actually like find the beginning, middle and end of scene again. So that was fantastic. And I love that fact that like, you know, we all have different experiences and I think we had to meet in the middle. You know, some have more experience on camera than others. And then, you know, we, we share with each other. We're like, oh, hey, if you just did that, this. And they're like, oh, Coleman, how about you do this? I'm like, great. We're sharing with each other to right. help each other make the most honest um, experience possible for each other. Off camera, talking with these guys, getting to know them or having lunch. And I would ask several of them, uh, if you don't mind me asking, how did you end up here? And I hear these horrific horrible stories of what, what they did, the mistakes they made. And they, more than three or four guys said to me in, in different settings, if I only had had this before I did what I did, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't have ended up in prison. Uh, just reaching inside of yourself to find the man that's really in there, the lover that's in there through the arts. It's, just, it's a beautiful thing. And yes, Every damn prison through this whole country should have a program like this. Every one of them. I definitely, uh, I love talking about the the actual editing process because it's where it all comes together. So talk a little bit about uh, how the film changed in the editing room and maybe ways you didn't expect. Uh, it was actually something, this was one of the um, easiest ones we had to edit. And our editor, Parker Laramie, who, who edited our last film as well, is, is incredible in helping us shape the stories. The biggest problem with this one was just an incredible amount of material that we had from uh, from these men who gave so much of themselves from their own experiences. Um, and so there's a there's a scene in the movie that's, for example, um, the they're auditioning for the for the roles in the play mm -hmm. and everybody's bringing their own kind of spin into into what they're doing. And I mean, we could have had a 30 minute section for that that ends up at five minutes in the film and the stories that they that they all shared in in certain sections greg did a beautiful job in the direction and 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 in approaching each scene and each moment to create a space for yes what we were as coleman was saying a minute ago like what the original incarnation of the scene was from the page but then also opening it up to just whatever truthful thing that any of the men wanted to bring out in that moment and felt comfortable sharing and, and or felt like it needed to be there. And so really the hardest part of the edit was uh, was figuring out what to take out. Uh, it, it, it could have been a two and a half hour movie easily. I know this is a little bit generic, but uh, it's really cool that you're part of the Toronto Film Festival. I love this place. I love this festival. Just can you touch a little bit on what it means to premiere the film here? Be a part of the fest? It means everything. I, I, I love, I've fallen in love with Toronto. I was working on another project here earlier this year, and this is my third time at the festival. And I think it has, the audiences are, they're lovers of film and they love something new and a new way of telling story. And so, uh, and Cameron and his whole team, they're just the most welcoming, loveliest people in the film festival circuit. That's what I think. I, I would agree with that. It's 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 my second time here um, and Greg's second time here. And it's just such a, uh, it's got this mix of being such a celebration of film and such a beautiful festival and, and the audiences are lovely and the, and the staff is amazing. And it's also, it's got the size as well, but it doesn't lose that heart. It's, it's, uh, it's such a wonderful festival to bring a film to and, and let that be the platform out into the world. It's amazing. This is my third year in a row. So when I come next year, <laughs> I mean, I love it. It's awesome. It really is. I agree. Th this first time? Yeah, this is my first time. My first time in Toronto. Won't be the last. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm having a great time here. I'm, I'm enjoying this festival. I'm enjoying the, electric, the electric, electricity that's going around the city. You know, I, I got here yesterday and I just put my bags down and just walk. I just wanted to go walk around and see the people and feel the energy, just to get the energy of the area. And the energy of this area is magnificent. Ah. It's a beautiful thing, man. I can't, you know, I just, I looked out my window and recognized it's a giant woodpecker. 
outside my window. Well, really? I never seen it before. Oh, really? Really? Jay really? <laughs> Woodpecker. Out. Come on, Canada with the woodpeckers. Exactly. The, the, the thing I love also about this city is uh, when you. <laughs> that was not the answer I was expecting. Is uh, it, it, coming from America where it's a little bit warm. Uh, the mm -hmm. weather here is fantastic. Oh, yeah. I love this weather. I wish it could be this all year round. This weather right here is good. It's fantastic. Listen, I could ask you a million other things, but because no one's seen the movie yet, it's hard to get into the specifics. But I'm glad I could help shine a light on the, you know what I mean. And yeah, thank you we can, so much. Man. We appreciate you. Thank you know you. what I mean. Um, but listen, congrats. Thank Sincerely, and for everyone watching, um, I absolutely recommend this film. And I really hope it gets a wide, uh, a, a way for a lot of people to see it. Thank, thank you. Very thank much. you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Steve. Appreciate it.